Ladies and gentlemen, turn in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 5, verses 43 through 48. Let's stand for the reading. God's holy word. You can stand now. And I want to see where that's written down at. Jesus reveals God's true intent behind the law. Part 56, The Law of Love, The Just Jesus Evangelistic Campaign, Day 328, since January the 20th, 2017, Day 695, since January the 1st, 2016. Jesus Christ said, Ye have heard that it hath been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. Stand up in the back. But I say unto you, Love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. That ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. For he maketh his son to rise on the evil and the good. And sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. For if ye love them which love you, what reward have ye? Do not even the publicans the same? And if ye salute your brethren only, what do ye more than others? Do not even the publicans so? Be ye therefore perfect even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. Holy Father God, we pray in the holy name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We praise you, Lord, and we thank you for your mercy. And Lord, we don't say that lightly. And Lord, there may have been a few times in my past in praying where I didn't say that word mercy uh, with the uh, emphasis that I should have said it. But Lord, without your mercy, we would not be standing here today. If it were not for your grace, your Holy Word tells us in First Peter that we have obtained mercy through your Holy Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And now we are a people, not only a people, but a chosen people by you. And so, Holy Father God, I praise you and I thank you for your mercy. And Lord, at the same time, we understand that, that your mercy and your grace and your favor does not mean we have a license to sin. In fact, you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for our sins. And so, Lord God in heaven, we individually 
confess our sins in a very real sense, those of us who are saved. And for Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us of our sins uh, by your mercy and grace, our failures and our faults. Crush and crucify, Lord, our flesh and the old man within us all. And fill us all with the fullness and the power, the unction and the anointing, Lord, of your Holy Spirit. And Holy Father God, we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, by your mercy and grace, by the power of your Holy Spirit, use such wretched people as we are in your divine uh, grace, evangelistic enterprise. And Lord, open the eyes of the blind and unstop deaf ears. Have your Holy Spirit to draw them in to come to know your Savior before it is eternally too late. And we pray that you would revive Christians again. And Holy Father God, uh, uh, the devil is fighting hot and heavy today against us. Uh, he has served notice, uh, notice on us that he is not going to uh, let us finish the year with ease. Uh, and uh, as he has fought... Uh, down through this past year he's fighting today and we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ by your mercy and grace cast out the devil his demons and his hosts and the satanic spirit of Judas betrayal and sabotage and pride out of the hearts minds souls and spirits of the people who have that issue in their lives I plead the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ I pray that you would pave the way for us to continue to preach your holy word and your holy gospel. Stand up in the back and we pray for souls to be saved and lives to be changed and your holy name glorified. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for his sake. Amen. You may be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, Henry Morris said, Jesus knew no believer could be sinlessly perfect in this life. Nevertheless, this must be the standard and the goal. Not for gaining salvation. but for living the Christian life. For we gain salvation by God's mercy and grace through His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, and us receiving His Son and believing on His Son. If we are saved, he goes on to say, we have a perfect standing in Christ and we should perpetually seek to fulfill this standard by God's help and God's grace. In this passage, beloved, Jesus Christ has been exhorting us to carry out the uncommon task of loving our enemies. And by the way, you cannot do that in human strength. Not only has he expressed that love for our enemies ought to be our point of view, he states clearly that we should show love for our enemies through our, not only our words, but from our hearts and in our actions. Amen, somebody. Of course, such action will not be natural to our human point of view. But Jesus is calling us to go above and beyond and 
to go higher. He says in verses 46 and 47, For if ye love them which love you, what reward have you? Do not even the publicans the same? For see the Pharisees and Sadducees and the religious leaders over the years had uh, created ideas and making people think that it is okay, which is our sinful uh, human nature to do, it's okay to hate people or to have uh, to hate our enemies and love our family and friends. But that was not the intent of the commandments of God and the law of God. And Jesus is making that clear and plain. In fact, Jesus puts God in it by saying in this passage that God causes it to rain on those who love him and those who don't. He causes the sun to shine on those who hate him and those who love him. Right here, my beloved, if ye salute your brethren only, he says, what do ye more than others? Do not even the publicans so? Now, to Jesus' audience at that time, the publicans were, these were not the republicans. But the publicans were seen as the lowest of the low. The publicans were Jews who collected taxes from their fellow Jews for uh, the Roman government. The Romans allowed them to add on any amount of money on top of the taxes that would do and keep that profit for themselves. In some areas there were restrictions on that. But the Romans didn't care how much you gouged your people as long as they got their tax payment. So the Jews had a special hatred for the publicans. They saw them as traitors. They saw them as Uncle Tom's. Jesus compares his listeners to the despised tax collectors of that day. He is saying the publicans love those who love them. The publicans care for their own and themselves. If all you do is love those who love you, you are no better than the publicans. I know some of you want me to say the Republicans, but we're talking about the publicans today. Don't you want to do better than them? He asks. Of course, our motivation for loving our enemy ought not to simply be a desire to prove ourselves more altruistic than others. In fact, Jesus calls us to a much, much higher standard. He says in verse 48, Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. Think about the weight of that for a moment. Jesus says, God the Father is our standard. He is who we should aspire to be like. 
of course we will never be perfect in our understanding of the word uh, of course we will never be perfect like God is perfect down here but as John Wall would write perfection here refers to uprightness maturity and sincerity of character with the thought of maturity in godliness or attaining the goal of conformity to the character of God allow me to ask you a, 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 a question are there are you at the point in your Christian life there are some things you're just not going to do because you trust God because you love God back because you fear God you learn the lesson of obedience you've made up your mind there's no open door to that we're still not perfect but you ought to be maturing in God amen somebody you ought to be maturing in God there ought to be some things that whereas when you were a younger Christian there was a possibility that you would do but there's some things now that you have been saved for a while uh, you just will not do them you're not you, you, you you've made up your mind like Daniel that you will not defile yourself with the king's meat while sinless perfection is impossible godliness in <coughs> in this biblical concept is attainable this type of perfection is akin to the Old Testament admonition be ye holy for I am holy that's also in the New Testament we will never achieve perfect godliness perfect holiness in this life but that does not mean we ought not to strive for it by the grace of God in the power of the Holy Spirit and certainly uh, we ought to desire it amen somebody be perfect being perfect being godly being holy means making sure our actions align with God's will in essence we want the same thing that God wants is that where your heart is if you've been saved a while your heart ought to be there do you desire the things that God desires are you concerned about the things that God is concerned about and Dr. Warren words we put it this way the father loves his enemies and seeks to make them his children and we should assist him Wow how about that are you willing to do that do you have that kind of heart a heart like God's are you willing to love sinners are you willing to love your enemies and those who criticize you and <clears throat> those who persecute you and despitefully use you let's pray Holy Father God we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ help us to love our enemies as you loved us for we were once enemies of yours and give us your grace and the power of your Holy Spirit to love our enemies to you in Jesus Christ's name we pray and for his sake amen now ladies and gentlemen if you're with us today and you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ in the free pardon of your sins as your personal Savior allow me to show you how you can place your faith and trust in him 
for your salvation today from sin and hell. First, accept the fact that you are a sinner and that you have broken God's laws, His Ten Commandments. The Bible says in Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Secondly, accept the fact that there is a penalty, there is a punishment for sin. The Bible states in Romans 6.23, For the wages of sin is death. Third, accept the fact that you are on the road to hell. Jesus Christ said in Matthew 10:28, And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Hell is an awful, sad, pitiful place designed for the devil and his angels, not for human beings. But if you act like the devil, you will go to hell with the devil. If you don't trust Jesus Christ as Savior. That's the bad news. But I have some good news for you. The Bible says in John 3.16. For God so loved the world. That includes you. That he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him. Should not perish. But have everlasting life. And just believe in your heart in the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe that he died for your sins, was buried, and rose again. And pray and ask him to save your soul. For the Bible says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou you shall be saved. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10 verse 9, that if thou you shall confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God have raised him from the dead, thou you shall be saved. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you believe in your heart in the Lord Jesus Christ, dear friend, that he died on the cross for your sins, was buried, and rose again, and pray and ask him to save you, he will save you. I'll be glad to lead you in that prayer called the sinner's prayer. Repeat after me phrase by phrase and mean it from your heart. Holy Father God, I acknowledge that I am a sinner and that I have broken some of your Ten Commandments. For Jesus Christ's sake, please forgive me of all of my sins. Please have mercy and grace upon my soul. And please forgive me of all of my sins. As I now believe with all of my heart in the name uh, in the Lord Jesus Christ, who died for me, was buried and rose again. Lord Jesus, please come into my heart and save my soul and change my life. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and help me to repent of my sins past and to follow you in the new life. In Jesus Christ's name I pray and for his sake, amen. Ladies and gentlemen, if you believed in your heart in the Lord Jesus Christ, that he died on the cross for your sins, was buried, and rose again, for that is the gospel, allow me to say congratulations on doing the most important thing in life, and that is trusting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. For more information to help you grow in your newfound faith in Christ, please go to Gospel Light Society. Dot com and read my pamphlet, What to Do, after you enter through the door. Jesus Christ said in John 10, 9, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved, and shall go in and out and find pasture. If you trusted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior today, please email 
me at dw3 at gospellightsociety.com or one of our other emails on one of our other sites or platforms and let us know. We have some free material that we want to send you. If you have a prayer request, please email that to us as well and we will pray for you until you tell us to stop. Until next time, my beloved, and next time for the Sunday morning service will be in the year 2018. God loves you, we love you, and may God bless you real good. Tonight at 1118 Central Time, 1218 uh, on the East Coast, I would imagine it will be 918 on the West Coast, I'll be preaching uh, things to leave behind and things to take with you and uh, it uh, will be a very helpful message as you depart 2017 and uh, enter into 2018 at uh, 118 by the grace of God I'll be preaching the first message of the new year in the Just Jesus Evangelistic Campaign and Homily Series and uh, uh, then at 318 we'll have our first White House Family Devotional and so we're going to be with you we're going to be up all night anyway and so uh, uh, we'll be with you and we'll be available and sharing with you the Word of God and so since we're going to be up, join us if the Lord will so lead you. If you're not going to a local church watch night service, if your local church is having one, you ought to attend that one. And you can catch us on the other end. God bless you, dear friend. Until next time, Happy New Year if I don't see you anymore. And let's thank God for 2017.